One of the many tasks we get the first year apprentices to do is the one that always seems to be the most arcane, the most old fashioned way. And it's driving between centres using these hulking great lumps of cast iron called drive dogs. And it seems like a bit of a backward step. We've got perfectly good three jaw chucks. We've got the dreaded four jaw chucks that all your apprentices really hate. And they're fantastic ways to hold things. Why on earth would we need to go back to something as old and outdated uh, as a drive dock? Well, I'm gonna make a little video here just to show the key advantages to using turning between centers when it comes to your machining work. You won't use it that often. Um, I haven't turned between centers in at least the last year and a half and I probably won't turn between centers for another year and a half afterwards but when you need it knowing how to do it effectively is really really important. So let's have a look and see what the key advantage is to this particular turning setup. So I've got my back plate, um, old cast iron back plate again you can see I haven't used it very often by the fact that it's got a healthy layer of rust on the outside of it I do really need to clean it up. Uh, in the center here I've got a revolving uh, sorry I've got a fixed center um, three morse taper unfortunately and irritatingly I don't actually have one that fits directly into the morse taper socket in the actual lathe which means I've had to use an adapter which is far from ideal because it extends the tip of the center a little bit too far out for my liking but nevertheless it will work um, I've got a piece of material set up I've got center on each end this one I've actually drilled on the mill you can actually see the crosshairs that I put in there when I centered it up um, it's, it's rough faced uh, it's just a piece of bar I've literally pulled off the shelf so because this was hand drilled just on the mill it's not going to be very accurate and it doesn't matter so we're just going to locate the two centers um, I've got my tailstock coming out quite a long way before it engages and that just gives me a little bit more room to get the camera in ideally we want to limit the amount of extension we've got there to keep it as rigid as possible so we just nip that up and what we want to see is that our revolving center here is turning but it's turning quite friction free we haven't got too much load on the bearing here which will cause it to overload I'm going to lock that off at the top obviously my tail slide is locked off in this instance what I've done is I've just installed a bolt here and that bolt is acting as my drive so it's pushing on the arm of the drive dog that's going to impart the rotational forces of the lathe into our piece of work through the drive dog. This is a bit crude, this is only really for a demo. You'd ideally want to do it a little bit nicer than that um, if you had a longer term setup. Now in this instance on this old lathe, top speed isn't particularly high, we're only just about 500 RPM. Um, so I'm not all that bothered about vibration, I'm not going to be doing anything particularly intricate, just giving a quick demonstration. If you were doing this at higher RPM, if vibration was a concern, we can actually use these other slots that we've got in the backing plate and we can balance the whole setup so that we get a reduction in the amount of vibration that we're getting. And it's possible you can slip the lathe out of gear and you can find out whether the heaviest points will over time just drop down to the bottom and then you can select something and maybe bolt something in opposing where you've got uh, your any drives that you fitted in. Drive dogs themselves should be kind of balanced, that's why they have a big lump at this end where they have the tail coming out the end, but they're far from perfect, so don't expect them straight out of the box to be ideal. And again, you might need to just tweak it a little bit to get any vibration removed from the system. So, we've got a roughly centered piece of bar. So I said the center drillings that I put in there just basically done by hand so we could have quite a degree of inaccuracy in there um, what we're going to do is just turn it on and see if we can pick up any any vibration in it and yeah there, there's there's definitely if you watch the top edge that we've got along here you can actually see it's going up and down a little bit because I haven't drilled that center as accurately as I should have done 
but that doesn't matter. What we've done, when we set this up, what we've done is between two centres we have produced an imaginary centre line. Exactly the same as you would see on a drawing of any part that you were doing. And that centre line now, because we're held between centres, will be fixed. So from this point on, any machining work that we do while it's held between centres will be concentric. So we'll turn a little bit off of that, just to clean it up. Not the nicest of cuts, doesn't matter, just enough so that we can run a DTI on it and take some measurements. Right, well, I've got the DTI in place, uh, just sitting above the clean section that we've done. Uh, useful tip, when you've got it set up like this, we can actually find the high spot, make sure we're reading accuracy, because it's the point that the needle stops. So, it's about there, a little bit of variance, but yeah, it's about there. So just zero that in. And then I've got the machine out of gear, I'm just going to rotate it. And freshly cleaned, freshly machined, it's a tiny bit of movement on the needle. Not a great deal. Probably as much of it is the force I'm putting in as I turn it. So that's perfect, that's at zero. So the next part that we can do is we can move a clock out of the way and we can do the one thing that you never do when you're working with a three jaw. I can pull the part, the part out of the lathe. I could now take this off and I could go and do some work on the milling machine. Freshly milled, bring the part back and I can install it back between the centres. Lock it off. Um, useful thing to remember when you're using centres, before you turn the lathe on just make sure that this drive dog is engaged with whatever's imparting the drive in the direction of rotation. Otherwise what will happen is if you've got it just hanging there in mid space the lathe will turn on and this will come flying in and kick this really hard which could potentially damage it, could cause it to spin on the work, um, mar your part. Any, any of those kind of issues could easily arise. So just make sure it's located. We're not going to turn this on, doesn't matter. Now I've carefully set the DTI up so that I know I can get away with doing this. But ideally you want to try and lift your plunger before you bring it into contact. And got the high spot there. Still back at zero, so no change there. And we rotate it. And once the clock has settled down, in terms of movement, virtually nothing. Less than one thousandth of an inch. Now there is no way you would be able to achieve that on a three jaw chuck. You can easily get twenty thousandths of an inch error every time you remove something from a three jaw and put it back in. You can do it with a four jaw, but every time you go to use the four jaw chuck when you put the work back in you're going to have to get the clock back out again and you're going to have to re-clock it to pick up on the face you want to remain concentric so it's entirely doable but it requires a lot more work and a lot more time if you want to accurately be able to take your workpiece out of your lathe do a different operation on a different machine put it back into the lathe between centers is always always the best way to do it yes it seems arcane it seems old-fashioned crude little cast lump just hanging on the side of your work but you can really see there's a significant advantage that you have here um, over virtually any other form of lathe holding device you can use collets collets are fantastic 
this piece of bar even though it's only a 25 mil piece of bar is way way bigger than will fit in my lathe using collets here I can hold almost any size if it will fit above the waves of the lathe I could in theory turn between centers so don't disregard turning between centers as just a task that we get you to do just for fun it is a genuinely important method of holding when you're working on a lathe and it's something that you should always have ready in your arsenal